assalamu alaikum dear students and a very good morning to all of you hope all of you are doing great so kids welcome to the class again as you all know my name is nida sahar and i am your science teacher so kids as you all know that we have started our sixth chapter investigating matter in my previous lectures i had talked about matter volume and three states of matter in which we had discussed the properties of solid liquid and gas we also had talked about changes in states of matter in which we had discussed the physical change and a chemical change in today's lecture i am going to give a quick review to these topics and i am also going to discuss solutions with you and i am also going to discuss book exercises with you so let's get started so kids now i am sure you all know that what is matter everything we see around us is matter anything that has weight and it takes up space is matter matter is made up of molecule and on the basis of the arrangements of these molecules there are three states of matter solid liquid and gas right and then we had talked about the changes in matter and we had discussed two types of changes there are two types of changes that occur in matter physical changes and chemical changes in a physical change matter changes form but not chemical identity substance remains same and does not lose its major properties and examples of physical change include melting of ice chopping wood or slicing bread right and what is a chemical change in a chemical change a chemical reaction occurs and new products formed a new substance is formed with different properties than the old substance and the examples of chemical change include burning of wood rotting banana fireworks right here you can see some more examples of physical and chemical changes from your daily life for example physical change include breaking a plate cutting paper peeling a banana slicing bread melting popsicle water freezing to ice these all are physical changes and here are the examples of chemical changes burning of wood a pear that is rotting frying eggs baking a cake lighting a firecracker rust forming on a nail these are the examples of chemical changes okay kids now this is the page from your book this is page 62 solutions what happens when we add a spoonful of sugar to water the sugar disappears and the water tastes sweet the sugar has dissolved in water this is a solution of sugar in water the solution the sugar is a solute and the water is the solvent here you can see this is the glass of water and when we add sugar in it and then we mix it it will make a solution right when sugar is dissolved in water we get sugar solution if we go on dissolving sugar in water a time will come when no more sugar can be dissolved such a solution is called a saturated solution we cannot dissolve any more sugar in a saturated solution in the same way this is a sugar solution that you had made and if we add more sugar in it it will form a saturated solution that it will not dissolve more sugar 
so kids before getting into further details you should know the definition of these terms solute solvent and solution so what is a solute the solid that dissolves in a liquid is called the solute and what is solvent the liquid in which the solute dissolves is called the solvent and what is solution the liquid that we get when a solute dissolves in a solvent is called a solution solute plus solvent they form a solution for example if we here are the examples of solute solvent and solution if we are going to make a solution of sweet milk then what would be the solute and what would be the solvent sugar that we add in small amount and it dissolves in the liquid this will be solute and milk this is a liquid in which sugar is dissolving so this is a solvent and after mixing of these two it will form a sweet milk that is a solution clear and here salt is a solute because it is a solid that dissolves in a liquid and here water is a solvent and after mixing of it we will get a solution that is salty water right so solute is the substance that dissolves in a liquid and solvent is a liquid in which solute dissolves and after mixing of these two we will get a solution right so here you can see how to make a solution we would need a solute that is a substance that will dissolve in the liquid and we will have a solvent that is a liquid which dissolves that solute right so salt is a solute water is a solvent and when we mix these two it will form a salt solution right for example if you are making a tang tang juice right the potted form of tang is solute the water is solvent and after mixing solute and solvent you will get a tang 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 juice that is a solution clear so kids here you can see more examples of solute solvent and solution so the first one here you can see this is water what is this is it a solvent or a solute water is always a solvent because other substance will dissolve in it right so this is solvent and lemonade mix this is a solute because it will dissolve in water right and after mixing of these two a lemonade will be formed and this is a solution clear now this is iced tea what is it is it a solvent or is it a solute this is solvent here is a sugar this is a solid substance which will dissolve in the liquid when we dissolve sugar in iced tea it will form a sweet tea that is a solution right now milk this is a solvent chocolate sauce this is a solute because we will add it in small quantity right solvent is always in large quantity and solute is always in small quantity when we add both of these it will form a chocolate milk that is a solution right when a substance dissolves in a liquid what we get is called a solution to prepare the lemonade we add sugar salt and lemon juice to the water the prepared lemonade is called a solution while the substances that were dissolved in it sugar salt and the lemon juice 
are solutes. The liquid that is water in this case in which the solute dissolves is called a solvent. The solute is always lesser in quantity than the solvent. Okay, now what is a saturated solution? A saturated solution cannot hold any more solute at a certain temperature. For example, this is a cup of tea. If we add one spoon of sugar in it, it will get dissolved. If we add two, three, four or five, they will dissolve in this cup of tea. But if we add more sugar in it, if we add 12 spoons of sugar in it, it will not dissolve, right? So the point at which the solvent stops dissolving solute, that point, that solution is called a saturated solution, right? For example, this cup of tea has cup capacity of dissolving 5 spoons of sugar. After that, it will not dissolve the sugar at that temperature. So that solution is called saturated solution. A saturated solution cannot hold any more solute at a certain temperature. Right? We cannot dissolve any more sugar in saturated solution in the same way. Right? If you keep adding sugar to a glass of water and keep stirring, a stage will come when the sugar will no more dissolve in it at that temperature. The extra sugar will settle down at the bottom of the vessel. Such a solution is called a saturated solution. Okay, it's time to discuss book exercises with you. On page 63, there is exercise 1. Put a tick for true and cross for false. Give a reason for your answer. A. Solids and liquids have definite shapes. Yes, tell me both, both of them have definite shapes. No, solids have definite shape, but liquids take the shape of the container in which they are kept. B. Boiling water to produce steam is a chemical change. No, because it is a physical change and steam can be converted into water and the, and the product that is forming, it has the same properties as the previous one. Right? C. All forms of matter have fixed volumes. No, gases do not have fixed volume. They take the shape of the entire space they get. Right? D. Air is not matter since we cannot see it. No, air is matter because it occupies space and has weight and it is the third state of matter, right? That is gas. E. Any amount of sugar can be dissolved in a glass of water. No, only a limited amount of sugar can be dissolved in water, right? Okay, now exercise 2. Name these. Solid, liquid and gas are the three states of matter. B. They have definite shape and volume. Solids have definite shape and volume. C. They can flow but have a definite volume. Liquids can flow and they have a definite volume. D. In this change, a different kind of matter is produced. In a chemical change, different kind of matter is produced. E. A solid that is dissolved in a solvent. Solute. F. A solution in which no more solute can be dissolved. Saturated solution. G. It takes a the entire space in which it is kept. Yes. 
okay kids now it's your turn you are going to read the chapter thoroughly and you have to underline the main points and i'm sure after watching this video you would be able to tell what is matter and what are its three states can you give three examples of physical change from your daily life what is a chemical change what is a solute what is a solvent what is a saturated solution can we add more solute in a saturated solution so kids that is all for the today's lecture and i am sure everything is well understood i am going to see you in the next class till then all of you stay home stay safe and study hard take care and allah hafiz